Well, there's obviously something out there. Now, this... Really, do you think it's a living thing? Do you think it... I mean, you were saying before that it, it could be a trick of the mind. It could be a trick of the mind. It, you know... But the mind doesn't leave... It doesn't leave footprints. I know. This is what gets me. Yeah. Because it's, it's things like that when I'm about ready to just say, forget this, this is nonsense. I have found prints. I found... Uh, you could look this up on YouTube. I did a, a video three years ago called um, Ho uh, it's Hopewell. You can look up uh, Skunk Ape Footprints Hopewell. And there was this tributary that went out to this little creek off of a horse trail. And when I was coming back from the tributary, I found this huge print. And I remember the shape of it. I got photographs of it. I got video of it. And on your one, one of your videos that you took out on the swamp, when you I think Kevin calls you over. Oh man, you gotta see this print. Granted, it's not a big, long print, but look how round this toes are. It's straight in. Look how deep and how why this heel is and you come up and as you approach and that print becomes visible i stood up even though i was all home home alone and i pointed at the computer and i said that's the same damn print a screenshot of that compared to a screenshot of the one i took three years ago about 40 miles south it's the same animal that left that print and that's what keeps me going is when you find things like that, then you, that was a moment where I just said, I know now that this thing has got to be real. Well, just less than 48 hours ago, I looked at your video online of that. Oh, you did? I, I, I looked it up and I looked at it. I noticed the shape of that foot is exactly the same shape as this foot. Yeah. I mean, it's either the individual or one of his close relatives. Well, yeah, or it's, it's the population have similar, but I've also found thin, narrow footprints. Uh, I have mm -hmm. found, you know, wide, fat ones. Mm -hmm. um, there are variations. I have found some that were worn. They've been there a while because um, a small animal had done its business in the print. Mm -hmm. So it had been there a while and it was kind of worn, but it was leading down to a creek bed. And one of my critics, I had many, um, said that I had just simply taken my shoe off and and stepped it in the ground. Well, if I'm using my foot to fake prints, how come I have a different variety of sizes? Yeah. My foot doesn't change size. Right. Plus, I've got a, for my size, I have a small foot, um, like a goat's foot or something. It's, I, I wear a size nine shoe, mm. and that's it. So there's no way I could replicate some mammoth size of, yeah. of shoe print, a foot footprint. Well, um, if there are living creatures in the woods, why do you suppose, and I, I, I know there are, there are logical answers for this, but um, I'd like to hear from you. Why do you suppose we find no dead bodies of these creatures? Oh, well, that, that's like we don't find dead bodies of other animals, like bears and things. In three years, I've only found one body, which was of a coyote that may have passed away of natural causes. The reason I say that is because its teeth were very worn, the molars, I, get to, I mean, do, do coyotes have molars? Um, very worn, it was probably an older dog that had passed and he was in medium to advanced state of decomposition, so maybe he'd been there less than a week, maybe five, six days. Terrible smell. You could barely get near it to, to photograph it. But, that's sort of a rare find to come across something laying there dead because they'll decompose and animals will eat them and scatter the bones. And so that's an easy question. The absence of a body lying dead in the woods is, um, is, is, is no, um, is, cannot be used as proof that the animal does not exist because I've never found even squirrel or raccoon bodies and they're all over the place out there. So yes. Yeah. 
You know, so they, well, the old saying, you know, uh, absence of evidence is not evidence. It's not evidence, evidence, right. Well, tell me this. Um, if there's something out there, do you think it'll ever be identified and will we ever see it in the zoo or will we ever recognize it as an aborigine? Will it ever be proven and discovered, do you think? What's your feelings? Do you think we'll ever get proof? I would have to lean towards, you mean like a, a, a body in, in, a, in a, a zoological department? Right. I don't think so. Um, the animal through evolutionary processes is able to evade us and evade capture for whatever reason. That's what's in its genetics. And I just don't think that we're, we're going to find him or it. And I, I would hope that we do. You mentioned zoo. I, I hope I'm wrong on that. But because of its adaptation to nature to evade humans, putting it in a zoo would be, would be the worst form of torture. It would be like solitary confinement to a human being. Uh, the Geneva Convention would say that that was torture. So an animal that is not gregarious, obviously, um, not like uh, other animals, like squirrels and um, seagulls, for example, that's a bird you can get close to. It almost doesn't even care. So you could put a squirrel or a seagull in a zoo and as long as you're feeding the, the thing, it, it doesn't care, couldn't care less. But something like this has got a real reason to not be around humans. So putting it around us would be a bad idea for the, for the animal. Well, wouldn't you feel that any primate would fall into that same category, like a gorilla? No, no, they, they, seem, to do, they seem to thrive and do very well in captivity. Um, chimpanzees at the Lowry Park Zoo, they, they seem very happy. They're around other chimpanzees. They're well fed. That seems to be a, just a primary consideration for them. And they also get something they never get in the wild, which is veterinarian care. So as long as they're fed and they're around other chimpanzees, they don't even know they're in captivity. And a Sasquatch wouldn't go for that. Well, we were able to capture gorillas and, and chimpanzees and able to walk up on them and see them in the jungle. There's some reason why we can't walk up on this thing. Yes, yes, it is a different Kind. It's a different kind of animal. Hmm. So um, we can't even spot it from a distance. So there's a reason why it does that. Well, then it, would you agree that it would have to be treated differently than an animal? And what I'm saying is, would you treat it more like a man? No, because I don't think it is a man. Uh, as we were, we were saying before the, before the show tonight, um, I think it's a, it lives completely off of instinct. Uh, I said evolutionary processes. Um, this may have occurred at the ape man split that happened a million years ago. I don't know when, but primitive man, primitive human, uh, at some early stage invented tools, became a tool maker, primarily to make arrowheads to put on a spear to hunt fleet-footed mammals that it wanted to eat, like elk, for example. Mm -hmm. A human cannot run down an elk, but it can throw a spear, hit it and kill it, and then drag it off to the camp and eat it. Mm -hmm. So what we have with Bigfoot and with Skunk Ape is we have the absence of tool making. Uh, primitive man invented fire. There's no evidence that a Bigfoot has ever had fire. And primitive man invented art. Primitive cave drawings in France, for example, the first cave drawings that were found. Yeah. So we know humans express themselves by art, and humans are resourceful to decide that I would rather eat my meat cooked over a fire than eat it raw. Tastes better. Okay. These are things that humans have done. There's no evidence to suggest that a Bigfoot has ever done anything like that. They've never even found a vacated camp encampment like you would see their fire the bones they ate and maybe their little shelters that they built uh, there's nothing like that 
It's as if the animal just sleeps on the ground like every other animal in the woods does. So I don't believe they have intelligence. I, I really don't, not as we would define intelligence. And that's what I was saying earlier, that, that, could, re, that could define uh, uh, define who we are and validate our existence by really knowing that there's something special about humans. There's something unique about humans. And maybe we got our intelligence from God, I don't know, that's beyond my pay grade. But it, it could really show us that there's something very unique and special about humanity. Visit Tim Fasano's website, BigfootAfterDark.com.